Hey. So maybe I'll quickly do this because Mam bought, uh, booked me in for an albergue that currently has uh, access to a swimming pool, which is really pretty. And it's got this like lovely fountain, which like is sort of powerful and really nice on your shoulder. So I feel like I'm not making the most of the time. It's a uh, it's just gone five. I've just sort of found a little quiet bit to record some guitar because I feel like my other videos that I'm doing are a little bit, I'm a little bit behind on just recording guitar to put to them. And then my phone's filling up with space, blah, 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 blah. So, but yeah, this last week's been good. Um, I'm in, I can't remember, Taurus, Taurus del Rio. I'm gonna be heading that way tomorrow. So it's just sort of on the outskirts of the town. It's a really pretty little town, but there's there's nothing here. So the I'm sort of booked in for dinner. There's quite a few people about. So there's a few, and uh, but yeah, it seems like the pool is like the go-to. It's been cloudy today, which is really good to walk in this morning. There's a few showers, uh, just a bit refreshing because some of the heat has been has been crazy. Um, but yeah, I did from the last one, the last update I had. I pretty much just saw the Pyrenees. Um, and from that like point onwards, things just seemed to a bit, get a bit like magical, really. Like it was weird. I saw like every color butterfly that day. This big like spider run out from underneath my bag and it had these like big yellow stripes on it. It was, yeah, it was very strange, but like magic. Um, I sort of like, grabbed a thing of sweet corn off one of the fields and put that in my pasta, which was delicious. And yeah, I, I did it, I think that morning, perhaps it was that morning, but I ended up, I met, met one guy, I was chatting with him, Antoine, he's a really nice boy. Um, but I think I ended up doing like 42 kilometers, like just a massive stretch. I can, um, oh no, maybe, I think I did 40 and then like a couple more in, afterwards but uh to get to the top of this like hill in the sort of basque country then and like i climbed the top of the hill and then camped up the top it's got a bit overcast through the night and sort of blocked off a lot of the stars and i was worried it was going to rain but it held off and but the clouds sort of parted enough to like see the sunrise then in the morning which is really nice um and then yeah that that day i started taking it a little bit slower but I bumped into three people who had, a couple, French couple who had like started in Le Pew and a Belgian guy who's like, you know, everyone knows like Stefan Le Pelerin, like, you know, the, like Stefan the Pelgrim and he's just, he's been like tanking it. So uh, they, they were nice to walk with. We did a, a good section with them then, just sort of stuck with them, which was nice and to, did it go some, I think it was actually just the last day into St. Jean Pied Port actually. Um, it was a big, it was a big walk and I was a little bit gutted I booked it, but because I booked a place just to make sure I had somewhere to stay before the Pyrenees. And I was, I didn't need to do that distance, but I think with the, the, these three other walkers, you know, they'd been going for a long time as well. So just sort of, it was nice to company. Um, yeah, and they were a good laugh. So yeah, I got into St. Jean Pied Port. Like I had a traveler's check from when I was busking earlier on. So I had like 20 quid on that I could use in a certain place, which I was lucky that I actually sat down in one restaurant that I didn't double check if it could use it. I actually planned then to have the meal there, then go somewhere else and eat again. But even then that was like my first meal that I had in France, like besides like McDonald's and stuff. It's a bit of a shame, but I've got to try and budget as much as I can but it was the last night in France so yeah it worked out well I uh, had a nice lamb dinner did a little bit of busking uh, sort of by this bridge underneath this archway which was like nice acoustic so a few people saw me then um, and then yeah the next day like the Pyrenees was just like it was hard the hills the hills and the climbs were like really tough but luckily it was quite overcast and uh, if you've seen the, that film, The Way, that's like how the, the, the sun like dies at the start. It's just like gets lost at the Pyrenees. And I sort of thought like, oh my God, is this going to happen to me now? Because I'd passed a couple of people, had a few chats, but most I pretty much walked it all on my own. And uh, 
the thing is that I had like had a little bit of vodka on me. So at one point there was a like a van which was like selling selling juices and stuff. So I had a little orange juice. Had that and had a cigarette, which was yeah, it was nice just to have that at the top of one of these one of the, the edges. I can uh, yeah, all this cloud was rolling in and it's quite mystical. Coming down, I met a, an Irish guy who. At one, at one point, I stopped in this little shelter thing, and three uh, three Italian boys, who had, were pretty much doing the coast uh, coast from coast through the Pyrenees. Like, I don't know how long that's going to take, but I think most most of it stays quite high up anyway. But there's going to be some dips, and uh, just hardcore in all fairness to them. But I was like chatting with them. They were all in like coats, and I just still had my t-shirt on, like I was just dri dripping wet because there's bits of rain and just sweat. And then all of a sudden this guy comes walking past like with nothing, just this little man bag and a tiny little bottle of water. And I just sort of pointed him out to these boys as well. And like, we were all like, yeah, Jesus, what was he up to? If he like, I think if he got lost or got in trouble, he would have been in more trouble, but it was quite funny. I actually started chatting with him then on the way down. He's just very talkative Irish, Irish guy, Doyle from, uh, or Donnell, yeah, Donnell, who's been living in Australia for like 12 years. And so, nice guy. We got into Roscanvalis then in the evening. There's a big monastery there, or converted monastery, and like hundreds of beds. So I was paid for this night at the Arbergi then, and like it was, it was nice to be in a bed. This guy, Stefan, when I saw him, he had, he had got a smaller bag and said he's got rid of his tent because he had heard that you can face up to a 400 euro fine if you're like caught wild camping. So that's like something I'm, a, I'm trying to be aware of now and trying to just budget my money a bit better so I can get albergies. There are donation ones like Donativos they've written down, so, but I've just got to make sure I get there early and make sure I can get a bed. But they just work on a donation basis. So if I can get away with doing like three euros or five euros, That'd be brilliant. Most of them are quite cheap anyway. This one is was like, I think something like 15 euro for just the bed. I wanted just access, you had to pay extra for access to the pool and I wanted just the pool. I was gonna like buy some dinner then, but you had to get that in, in together. So it's come to like 27 euro, which is like a bit crazy, but it'll be my first meal with other pilgrims, which is pretty cool. Um, and the sort of menu looked all right, and the reviews online are supposed to be quite good, so I'm excited to have a nice meal. Um, but yeah, and then that, that monastery, so I'd, I'd spoken to people what they were planning, what they, the distance they were planning to get to, and pretty much the next big place was Pamplona, and it took me all day, but at half seven, I actually got into like Pamplona then, so like I ended up walking that four, a 42 kilometer stretch which is absolutely crazy. Um, I, you know, I get to one, that's the thing as well, I get to one point and uh, I'd been, I, yeah, I walked with these, there's two Italian boys, this German girl and a French girl, and it was really nice to just walk with them for a bit. They were quite fit. Um, and we sat down by this river. I, I cooked pasta for me and the German girl and at, at lunch with them. And then the Italian boys pushed on and uh, and the French girl stayed in that town, which is about halfway Pamplona. Now she went off to meet, the German went off to meet the Italian boys then, like at the sort of next town into it. And I just sort of carried on the path. But as soon as I sort of, I had a message from Beth, like my old boss at the hotel and just saying, call me. And I felt like I was, I was gonna be in trouble. And she rang just to say that like one of the boys, uh, Tom, uh, hot wash like and it went on to be a chef that died in a died in a car crash like so like single vehicle something was wrong with his tires and uh yeah 22 years old like so that's it's just been a big oh just a big shock really um she sort of as she rang she was like he was sitting down and i was she's still just sort of power walking through it like because i i knew it was getting later and i needed to get through but yeah, so I sort of had that news and I just swear in a lot and just quite angry that I couldn't like give him a slap like for probably, I don't, I don't know, just maybe driving like an idiot or something, but it's just 
it's strange, very strange. I think it's hit all a lot, the drew lot a lot. So that that had happened, and then I I stopped somewhere like a little bar and I had like two pints there. Um, I was like tempted to have a tequila, and I'm glad I didn't. Just like that, didn't like sort of lose it. Um, I, I pushed on a little bit further, and all of a sudden I see these like a few people with guitars and. So I sort of walk into this thing. I can see this bar there, in all fairness. And it's like outside area. But as I sort of walk in, I'm, I realise I'm actually in someone's back garden. And they sort of say that, like in Casa. Like, and it's like, oh shit, you know, they're on, a, they're on a holiday home. And I sort of pointed to the guitar then and just like, and they sort of invited me to sit down and gave me a beer, which was nice. I played a couple of songs with them and had a jam. The one guy brought out this trumpet, which was cool. And... Uh, and yeah, so like, just, it was just, yeah, strange just sort of dealing with that then, like, how to manage it and what I was going to actually do then that, that evening. But I, I just kept going and pushed into Pamplona, found this, the Jesus and Mary, Jesus and Maria hostel. It's like a big popular one and it was cheap enough, like 200 beds in that, I'm sure there was. Um, so yeah, I had a, like, I got there late and they sort of, I was upstairs, had a nice little spot, it was, it was good. There was a guy, Edgar, I met then, and we, he sort of said they're gonna go and get a beer, so quite a few people we had met outside and I went, you know, we went around with them and eventually came on to like this sort of plaza bit, which was just outside and this DJ was there. They had a bar and I probably should have just got cans, but it was nice just sort of sitting there. The DJ stopped at 10. And uh, I played a little bit of guitar then, and um, it was quite nice. I was having some interesting conversations with people. Um, and then, yeah, I just knew, like, I'd push that in the that day, so I, th I might as well just stay another day in Pamplona. It was a, it was a Sunday mine, so I, I was, there's still quite a few people around, but I didn't do well, as well as I hoped, busking. Um, but, yeah, the Sunday was okay, and... I sort of had a little wander then in the evening. I, yeah, I met up with a guy, Craig, and there's a German guy I've been walking with today, actually, Daniel. He, he was there then, so I meet this guy. He's just, like, very straight. He's, uh, he's a good laugh, though. He's, um, oh, it's, I can hear thunder. It's uh, pretty cool. But, yeah. Um, so we... Walk back to I went back to the hostel then I I Do, and yeah uh, Dolan was there or Donald was there he's just like so lost and like such a tourist as well like in terms of in Saint Jean Pierre de Port he just they knew he was coming like you know so they just end up selling him like a thirty pound pair of socks like thirty five euro for a uh, like a rain poncho which he like didn't even use I don't think. Um, just funny, and like his sort of, he wasn't really in Alberghi where he was staying, it was like a, a bar. And they had sort of, I still had an hour left. They, their QFU was at 10, or the, two other people, and he was gonna head back with them. But uh, I, I had an hour then before mine, so I just had a little wander around the town, and all of a sudden Donald's like w walking like towards me, like with his phone in his hand, he's lost. And it was just like, right, you know, I think you're going over here. And, I walked with him, he got me a beer and we had a little chat. Um, but yeah, I was just, I was just sort of taking the piss out of him. It's just like, you know, it's just like, you could have died up in the Pyrenees. <laughs> so could, you know, so could have I, I was being a bit reckless, but uh, yeah, then, so yeah, after Pamplona then on the Monday, um, I, I, the second night I stayed in this place, it was like sort of right by the door where, uh, a lot of people in and out and this one guy just sort of gets up so early his wife was there and like his wife just like stays sleeping whilst he for about an hour just like starts packing things and just faffing just taking so long just like doing what he's doing so i thought yeah get get on with it now and when i brush my teeth and pretty much just got to move on um i can't i can't really remember if i'd walked out actually with anyone from pamplona I can't even remember what, where the next place was. But yeah, I come up onto this big hill then. I think I, I've seen Daniel again. 
like after one of, into one of these towns. He's there with this girl Miriam, this Italian girl whose knee is quite bad apparently. She stayed behind in town. Um, so I walked with them for a little bit, which was nice, because I kept telling them about my bag and you know, and he's it's a German bag, German guy, and he's just like fair play that is is tanking. He's walked from he's walked from Switzerland in all fairness to him. Um, at one point he like runs down a hill just because I think it's easier on the knees just to run down. So that was quite funny seeing that. Um, and then yeah, just like get to the top of this hill and like was, what was really funny is this girl comes up to me, like really pretty young girl, like, but she's like, like oh my god, I've like you're Luke and you've walked from Wales and like I've heard you heard about you, and I just started laughing a bit. Me and Daniel laughing. It's just like I've now become this sort of like myth legend thing now that you know there's a guy who's walked from Wales with a massive bag and, and a guitar. So that's, uh, yeah, that's been quite funny. There was some, a couple of girls from England, a uh, really nice girl, Ali, who we've been chatting to a bit. Um, uh, I can't, uh, yeah, De Adele, who's like a French teacher from London, and uh, Paula and Melissa, like a, one's like from ca uh, California and the others, uh, Norwegian perhaps, I think so. But they are from, from the Netherlands. Um, so yeah, they were like, just like, you just like four very, very pretty and attractive young ladies. <laughs> and, uh, and then this guy, Tim, who was from London, who I was chatting with him for a bit as well as we were heading down this hill and I, I walked with them for a while, which was nice, you know, just to stop, stopped in a little town, made some lunch. And they, their first, the first hostel that they, they said they were planning to stay, stay in this Jack's and they had like in the garden, this like m mister, like. So he just sort of stood out, stood out under this like rain cloud thing that was being made, and I thought, yeah, I might as well stay here with them. And uh, but yeah, we asked someone that said about a river and swimming, and so we asked this woman like, would it be okay to swim in the river, safe? And she said, yeah, probably by this bridge. And a local guy sort of said, mm, it's probably not the best with the current. But uh, I got down to this river bank then and like went to the shops. I, I, I don't think it was a stupid idea because it was so cheap, but it was like six euros for a liter of vodka. So I was like, oh, that's like, that'd be all right. Uh, a couple of bottles of orange juice, that'd be grand. I like can offer out. And I did share with quite a few people, which is, which is good. But uh, yeah, I had a little drink, not much before, went for a swim then, which was just, yeah, magical. Like quite warm water at first, but then really cold in the middle. And yeah, just like got out sang some songs for the people there. There was loads of food going about. It was just, it's nice. Met loads of other people who turned up. And it's just a nice little community, so, of, of walkers that are here in this, this section at the moment. You know, some people are a day behind and some people are a bit further ahead. Uh, I, and then, yeah, the, so it was good, a good night. I had three uh, Austrian guys then, quite older, who had walked, walked a lot of the path 19 years ago. So they're saying how much things have changed and so they were they were not nice guys i've seen them today as well um and then yeah so the next next day it was still boiling this was only yesterday now and uh yeah, absolutely scorching and i'm just like quite hung over chatting to a couple of people but for most of it i walked on my own sat under the shade of a church big bell tower thing for probably like till like from two till six or seven and then uh carried on walking about seven into estella and it didn't feel like there was going to be much to see around i was quite skinned so i didn't want to fork out um i could have probably spent the evening busking somewhere on the spot but i just sort of pushed on through the town got up to this hill found this, there was a, a vineyard there with a with a fountain that does wine but the thing had like run out. So I managed to get like a, like a cap full pretty much that's squeezed out. But I, I knew I didn't want to drink anyway. Had some water and I thought like, okay, I'm going to go. I can see on the maps there's quite a rural, rural area after Estella. I thought I'll find somewhere nice and quiet. And I see this Italian, like old Italian guy there with this like big Alsatian. Uh, and so, I, and he said, well, I'm, you know, the, shouldn't he's pointed somewhere up, up there it's like no no and he's like i'm just gonna sleep here 
And so I thought, yeah, great. I put my stuff down and offered him half an apple and just chilled out and just, yeah, got to bed. I was, and then this morning I was up at like five, I think. I'd, I'd set the alarm for half five, but I'd woke up before mosquitoes like biting me and I heard about lemon being a, a good repellent. So I had half a lemon from the other day and I'm like rubbing this lemon on me. Um, so yeah, and that was, that was this morning I got going and Daniel again, this German boy was the first one I've, I've bumped into today. So we walked together for a bit and then we start seeing, seeing all the, the crowd, which was nice. They'd all stayed at Stella and got a pace on. And yeah, I'd sort of, I think my mam then said about finding somewhere to stay in this place. I thought I could possibly push on to Legronos today just because it's been overcast. It's, it's okay to walk in, but the heat changed. Like it, you know, the heat still was like boiling at like two o'clock then. So we must've got into this, into this town about half 12. And I at first didn't want to stay here, but Mam had posted me a screenshot of this booking.com with, and it had a pool in it. I thought, well, that'd be great. So uh, yeah, booked into here, which is, uh, should be nice to have some food now as well. I'm, I've had a little bit of munch and I've got, oh, I've, I think I should have enough now. It's only a 20 kilometer to Legronos, which now also checked on booking.com. And uh, I, I, I look on this thing and I've, I must have refreshed it, but all of a sudden there's like an entire apartment for nine euros for the one night. So it's got like kitchenette, it's got a washing machine. You know, I'd done most of my washing just then. Uh, so I, I'm gonna try and cook some nice food and maybe like, I've got to get there, I've got to busk, make money, and maybe sort of make make food that I can take on then the, for the next the next weekend. I don't know, don't know what I'm gonna do, but happy days like. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head back there now potentially have a little nap or get into the pool again I've been in once I've got some blisters on my feet again like one right on my on my toe on the edge of my toe but, uh, yeah things are, are tough but I'm I guess I'm trying to stay positive you just kind of have to um, yeah just nice to when I finally saw the Pyrenees and things just seemed to change then and now it's we see people said it's like don't feel really much like a pilgrim now because it's this swimming pool and like accommodation stuff but it's a good setup and you know i'm not going to knock it because tomorrow it'll be you've got to get back humble to you know there'll be more things like this i'm sure but just gotta try and re that's what these austrian guys were saying it's just like you gotta just try and forget about today now because this is like a luxury in the middle of nowhere and uh, it's not going to be like this a lot. Who knows? And, um, sorry, I can hear the thunder. Yeah, I'll try and do more of the other videos. I've pretty much got up to, I've uploaded one today, but it's still like Nant. Like I've got La Rochelle to cover, Bordeaux, uh, and then walking from Dax into the Basque country. And then all what, I, what I've got so far. And yeah, my phone's just getting full with stuff. So I've just recorded some guitar. Got to put the audio onto my phone, edit those then. It's a little bit of work. And yeah, I was just saying, it's like, it's kind of expensive stuff being like a pilgrim and it just does seem a little bit hypocritical. Like I'm not, not kind of like the message of God and Jesus and all that stuff. And so I'm thinking of that a lot, but I understand it's like a tourist, you know, tourism, people have got to make money and if they can get a business that is doing something on it, it's just like, you know, seeing these scallop shells that they've just got a bit of paint on, but they're like 20 euros or something. They're not that bad, but just loads of like souvenirs and and people just like a pilgrim menu. That's what I saw at the, going up the Pyrenees and it's just like, oh, pilgrim menu, but like the cheapest thing is a soup that's like six euros. It's just like, it's like restaurant prices. It's just like, can't just get a cheap soup. So yeah, hopefully I'll be able to budget better. But if you want to chuck me something, have a look on Patreon or PayPal. And uh, yeah, that'd be cool. And then I could, I guess I could make this like a career, just walking and talking, who knows. But yeah, 25 minutes might be a long time for people to watch stuff. But if you've got the time, we all do. 
All right, ciao for now. Bye.